what I'd like to do is start by just really looking at the study of ancient human history and, and the kind of um, uh, deep end effect that it has when you jump into that side of the swimming pool and body of information and you start researching this stuff. Uh, one, the, it doesn't take a long time to realize that as you start scratching away the, the surface information and shedding the textbooks from university and delving into this alternative literature, um, that things are not as they seem. And I think each and every one of you already knows that and has had that experience. And you've really got to go to university. And I studied pharmaceutics, uh, spent five years at medical school in Johannesburg, learning about the body and, and the effect of drugs and that kind of stuff. And, uh, and then uh, I even spent two years selling drugs, legal drugs, over the counter, um, only to realize that that's not really what I wanted to do. And that's not my calling in life. So. Uh, when I realized that there was this other, other whole alternative area of information and literature that's not necessarily respected by the established academic institutions, it became very exciting because it suddenly felt like I found you know, the, the Ark of the Covenant and discovered this, this um, illegal stuff that you can get in your hands into. Um, so one of the things that, that, that hits you first is things are not as they seem. And then the other thing is because when you start researching this ancient human history, origins of humankind, ancient cultures, civilizations, where did it all begin? Why are we here? Who are we? Where do we come from? What does it all mean? And it all starts to cross over. And it, very quickly you realize how everything, every bit of information crosses over everything else. And I'm talking about from you know, from the biblical scriptures to other ancient civilizations and their scriptures, to astronomy, to archaeology, to metaphysics, to quantum physics, to basic history, to medicine, to anatomy, to weird, wishy-washy stuff called um, you know, psychic ability and stuff like that. And, and you just realize how everything is connected and you might find this one little piece of information here that is completely and utterly removed from what you what it is you're researching and lo and behold a few months later you find exactly where that piece fits and that's really been a very exciting journey of discovery for me personally is to find how you've got to keep an open mind at all times and you've got to stretch your imagination and read every little piece of information that comes across your desk and however strange a little book or an email from somebody may be as weird and out of this world as it may seem somehow sometimes it catches you by surprise and gives you that really amazing piece of information it happens to me almost on a daily basis so everything is related and then actually it leads to a third my holy trinity of, of wisdom, which I've conjured up. And the third one is, I um, wasn't bold enough to put it here tonight because you're a really wise audience, um, is everything we've been told is a lie. And I'm going to show you why I say that. Because we've got to ask ourselves, how much do we really know about human history? Okay, we, we throw out these things all the time. We, throw out, we make these statements on a daily basis. Oh, it's not economically viable or, you know, you're an individual, you're entitled to your own opinion and all these kind of things. By the way, all these are all not really true, but that's another presentation. If history is written by the victors, and we say this all the time, history is written by the victors, history is written by the victors. Well, what does it really mean? Stop, think about what it means and put it into context. How can we put this into context and get some sort of scientific sense out of it. So let's first go back and, and analyze who we think we are right now based on current levels of information. We're told that we're the, we're the sort of pinnacle of civilization that started somewhere in Sumeria and or Sumer around 6,000 years ago. And our teachers and academics and history books tell us that we've pretty much learned everything we know or inherited everything we know from the Sumerians. You know, from astronomy, astrology, architecture, agriculture, um, money, etc. We've, we've inherited from the Sumerians. 
And uh, so they've been around for 6,000 years, right? And we're now the pinnacle, we're the smartest, the wisest, all these people before us were old, they know nothing. And, uh, and that's what most people in the world think today. Uh, luckily it's changing very rapidly, but still that's uh, the main body of current belief. Um, let's just assume that if history is written by the victors, just by a show of hands, you know, in 6,000 years, how many wars do you think we've had? Just shout out a number, anything that comes to mind in 6,000 years. <laughs> Come on, be brave. 5,000 wars. Or should we be kind to history and say we had one war per annum? Okay, in over a 6,000 year period. Just, I just need you to really contextualize this because these are very important subtleties that we don't often stop and think about. So if we had 6,000 wars in 6,000 years, how does that affect our knowledge of ancient human history, our origins, and all these things? Um, what you will find if you speak to statisticians or historians, they normally tell you that, well, we lose at least 50% of information um, after a conflict situation. That's what I got from doing my research. 50% oh, of information probably goes lost because those that write the history books write it with a different agenda. Okay, and they'll put in there whatever they want. And we, don't, we know very little about the people that were conquered by Alexander. They were just vile and evil and they all deserve to die. Right? So if you start putting it into a, a very basic statistical formula and a spreadsheet like this, it doesn't take long for you to realize even after event number eight, we already know less than 1% of the original truth. I'm not saying the Sumerians had the all, or all truth and nothing but the truth. But I'm saying it's because it's the oldest material we have, it's probably closest to the original truth that we have. So let's use that as, you know, starting point. So within, you know, how many, how many years, eight years, within eight years of the rise of the Sumerian civilization, we already know less than 1% of the original truth. What I particularly like is when you come down and you get to this, this very nice number, 124th event, 124th conflict. So it's only, only 124 years into civilization. We have that long, lovely number there. And I like that number because that's also known as Planck's constant, 10 to the minus 34. And essentially what this tells us is by the time we get to event 124, we already know less about our human origins than is permissible by the laws of physics. And that's an interesting thing to contemplate, you know, so just let's put that into context. So if we say, or if I say that we know nothing about our human history, I'm already starting to believe that. And I really do believe that, that everything we've been taught is a lie because it's just a convoluted distortion after distortion after distortion. And we've got to be very, very careful about what we believe about all the stuff in the past. What we do know from science is that we live in an electromagnetic universe where everything vibrates and spins. And these are very important things, very important principles. From the smallest atomic and subatomic structures, everything vibrates and spins. And in fact, you know, we told that the only reason this, this universe exists because of the spin and the vibration of all matter in it. If it stopped vibrating and stopped spinning, it would just disappear and there'd be this weird ethereal kind of energy left behind, which we don't quite understand. You know, some people go and call it God or whatever, the divine being. Or, I'm not so sure about that because there's some other interesting things that happen, um, which is what I'm working with uh, on, on our new book, Secret Numbers of God, with the brilliant Willem de Swart. But um, that's something else again. But everything vibrates and spins, and, and the planets vibrate around the, our sun just like the atoms and have the electrons and all the.